Okay then, so we have a basic app set up now with a homepage template showing some initial data on the screen. And now what we need to do is somehow implement some front-end routing so that whenever we click on one of these buttons, we send an Ajax request for the article. The server should respond to that request with a new HTML template, which includes the full article body. And then on the front end, HTMX is going to swap the body content to be that new template that comes back from the server. So although we're not actually navigating to a complete new page, we're mimicking that by just updating the whole page content using HTMX. And on top of that, we also need to figure out how to update the URL in the address bar to match the address of that new page content. So then let's head back to the code and we'll try this out. So hopefully you already know that to send a get request to get a new template using HTMX, we use the HX get attributes. And we want to apply that to the anchor tag for each article. Now, the way we add attributes to elements in Pug is to use parentheses and then just list them all out within those. So let's add a pair and inside we'll use the HX get attribute and set it equal to some endpoint, which I'm going to place inside backticks so we can output a variable inside the string. Now, that endpoint should be the backend route in the Express app for a single article. Now, currently we don't have that set up, so we'll make it shortly. And the path is going to be forward slash articles, forward slash the article ID. So that could be one, two, three, four, and so forth. So we can output a variable here using a dollar sign and curly braces, then access the current article and the ID property on it. All right, cool. So now when we click on this link, it's going to send a get request to the server, to this endpoint right here. And later we'll handle requests to the endpoint so that we send HTML templates back for the article. Now, before we do that, I wanna add one more HTMX attribute to this link to specify the target element in which the content gets swapped with whatever response HTML we get back. And since we're mimicking a whole new page, as if we're navigating to different pages on the site, we're gonna set this to be body. And that means when we click this button and get an HTML response, the HTMX library is gonna take that HTML and replace the entire HTML currently in the body tag with the response HTML. So by all accounts, it's gonna look like we've navigated to a new page. All right then, so that's the first step complete. And next up, we need to make a handler function for this endpoint on the back end. So let's make that second handler down here by saying router, then dot get again, because again, this is a get request, but this time the endpoint is forward slash articles and then forward slash. And if we go back to list, we can see it's the article ID. Now this part changes, it could be one, two, three, four, and so forth. So we need to denote that change right here by using a route parameter. And the way we do that in Express is by using a colon, then the name of the route parameter, which I'm gonna call ID. Then in the handler function, we'll be able to access this later to see which article the user is requesting. All right, so then, now we need our handler function, which takes in the request and response objects. And what do we wanna do inside this function? Well, ultimately we want to return the template for the article details, which is gonna be the name of the article and also the full body of the article, as well as maybe a button that says, go back to all articles. That is basically gonna be the article page that replaces the list on the homepage, right? So we're gonna return that HTML template. So we'll create a view for it later on. But the first thing we need to do is find out which article we're requesting using this ID. So let's first of all say const, article, and then we're gonna set that equal, if we can spell this, equal to articles.find, and then this find method fires a function for each article inside this articles array that we have right here. Now, when we do that, we get access to each individual article, and we can return either true or false inside this function. When we return false, it kind of skips the article, goes to the next one. When we return true, it takes the article and it stores it inside this constant. So we want to return true when the ID of the article it's iterating equals the ID from the wrap parameter right here. So we'll do that little check by saying a.id is going to be triple equal to pass int because it needs to be an integer. This right here, this property is an integer, this thing. So we need to pass the int that we get back from the route parameter and we pass in request.params.id. So that gets us this thing right here. So we return true when those match and then we have that particular article. The reason we needed that is so we can pass it into an article view. So let's render a view by saying response.render 
And then inside this function, we say which view we want to render. It's going to be the article view, which we don't have yet, but we will make it in a moment. Then as a second argument, an object, much like up here, and we can pass in a title. So the title is going to be the article name. Remember, we output that inside the head of the document. So article.name, and then also as a second argument, the article itself, like so. All right then. So now we can save that and we have that pretty much done now. Okay, so now let's make a view for the article over here. So we'll say article.pug and then inside this view file, the first thing we wanna do is extend the layout much like we did for the home page. So let me grab that, copy it and paste it right here. Below that, we need our content block for this page. So block contents. And uh, remember that gets output right here. So inside that content, we want a main tag. And inside the main tag, we're gonna have an H2 and that's gonna be for the article name. So hash curly braces and then article dot name. Below that, oops. Below that, we need the P tag for the article body. So let's do a hash curly braces and then article dot body. All right, so that's about it for now. Now we can view this in a browser. Okay then, so now when we click on one of these links, it should send the Ajax request for a new single article. The server should send the article template back and HTML should replace the current body content with the article template content. And yep, we can see that it works. We're now seeing the article details, so it's kind of like we've just navigated to a new page. And actually, HTMX is being quite clever here because the HTML template that gets sent back from the server actually includes the head tag with a new title inside it, right? And HTMX knows to pull out just the body content from the response template and it swaps that into the body tag in the browser. But it also knows to grab the new title from the head and inject that into the browser as well. What it doesn't do is just get the whole new HTML template head tag included and just try and squash it into the body tag. It's a little bit more sophisticated than that, which is cool. But there is still a couple of problems here. First, the URL in the address bar hasn't updated to say, look, we're on a new page. And second, we're kind of stuck on this page now. We can't hit the back button because HTMX hasn't pushed a new URL onto the history. We just swapped the content. So we can solve both of these problems using a single HTMX attribute. That attribute is one called HX push URL, which we can add to the anchor tag and set it equal to true. And what that does when we click this link to send that request is push a new URL onto the browser location history, which means we can then hit the back button to go back to the homepage. And it also updates the URL in the address bar too to match this URL that we send an Ajax request to. So let's give this a whirl. All right, so back on the homepage, if I click on one of these now, we can see this and we can see also the URL is up here. It's updated in the address bar and we can hit back to go back to the homepage, awesome. Okay then, so now we're linking from the homepage to the article details page, but now we wanna link back from the article page to the homepage. So we're gonna do this in exactly the same way, whereby we send a request to the server for the homepage HTML template, and then replace the whole body content again and push the URL onto the history. The only difference is gonna be the endpoint we send the request to. Instead of it being to the single article endpoint, it's just gonna to be to forward slash for the index view. So I'm gonna add a new anchor tag with a class of BTN at the bottom of this article template. And then as attributes, we need HX get to trigger the get request and the path is gonna be just forward slash. Next, we need an HX tag attribute, which again, we're gonna to set to be body so that the whole body content is what gets replaced. And then finally, we wanna push the URL to the location history and update the address bar. So we need to use the HX push URL attribute and set that to be true. And actually we need to add some text for the link as well, which is gonna be something like back to all articles, right? And then hopefully this should now all work. All right then, so now we can navigate to the article page and from there we can click on the back button and go back to the home page. awesome. And we can do that with any of the different articles. And we can see that the URL in the address bar updates as well as we do that, meaning that if we want to now, we can hit the back button and cycle back through the history as well and that'll works. 
So then, now we've implemented this kind of front-end routing where we're swapping out the page content when we click on links, and we're also updating the address bar and pushing the new URL onto the history. And this is similar behavior, at least from a user's perspective, as a single page application built using something like React or Vue. And that was all really, really easy to do. We just needed to add a couple of HTML controls onto anchor tags. But there's actually another HTMX feature that makes this even easier to do, and we'll be taking a look at that in the next lesson.